Hello guys and welcome back to the CCNA video series brought to you by ABY Design and Tech. In this video, we're going to follow on from the previous video and look at how we can move traffic between VLANs. So, in the previous video, we saw the base configuration of a Cisco router and we also saw how we can facilitate inter VLAN communication. So obviously in the previous video, I had two VLANs, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, and then I had two separate physical links running from my switch to my router one link was in VLAN 10, one link was in VLAN 20, and devices in VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 were able to communicate. All good. However, the problem with this design is that it's not efficient. We need to have a separate link, a separate interface for every single VLAN. Now, in my example, it was okay because I only had two VLANs. However, if I had 10 VLANs, 50 VLANs, 100 VLANs, etc. The more VLANs I have, the more links I'm going to need between my switch and my router, the more the more money that is going to cost. And the problem is, is that we're going to have to purchase a router which is big enough and bad enough to be able to handle that many connections. And the, this is the truth. Routers, especially the cheaper routers, they don't come with that many physical interfaces so there's always going to be a limitation there they're, they're not like a switch where a switch can come with 48 interfaces even a few hundred interfaces if you go for a, a chassis based switch a router wasn't designed for that purpose it's got a limited number of physical interfaces so luckily for us there are two methods which we can use as network engineers to allow routing between vlans but which actually are more efficient and better these methods are router on a stick and switch virtual interface. So in this video, we'll go over the theory of these two methods. And obviously in the videos which follow this, we'll look at how to configure these two methods on the Cisco devices. So to start off with router on a stick, it's pretty simple. We literally just use a router to route between VLANs. And you're thinking, well, wait a minute, Abda, isn't that what we did in the previous video? Well, it is, but here is the difference. With a router on a stick, we use a single interface you heard me right a single interface to support all vlans so no so no longer do we need a single interface or a single link for a vlan we use a single link between the switch and the router and that link can carry traffic for all vlans now from the switch side this is accomplished by using a trunk link because obviously a trunk link can support multiple vlans however you're probably thinking well how does this work from the router's end? Because obviously we just saw in the previous video, Abda, you told me that a router interface can only have an IP address in a single subnet. I can't have multiple IP addresses on that interface in multiple different subnets, in multiple different broadcast domains, and you would be right. So the way that we resolve this issue on the, on the router is we take that physical interface and then we logically divide it into sub interfaces. Those sub interfaces, those logical interfaces are then assigned to a VLAN. And when the router is receiving tr um, traffic over the trunk link, it knows to which sub interface to send this traffic to based on the dot one q tag um, sorry, attached to that traffic. So as an example, if um, some traffic comes in tagged with VLAN 10, then obviously the switch knows I'm going to send this traffic to the sub interface assigned to VLAN 10. So, the way that this works, so um, like I said um, earlier, that we have a single physical connection between our switch and our router, that would be configured at the trunk link from the switch end. Now from the router end, the way that we configure the sub interfaces is that we type in the physical interface that we want to logically divide. In this case, it's going to be FA0 slash 0. So I would type an interface FA0 slash 0. I would type in a dot and then the sub interface number. Now it's important to know that the sub interface number does not have to match the VLAN number. So in this case, I've configured sub interface FA00.10 and that's going to be the sub interface for VLAN 10. However, I could have configured this as FA00.100 and that could still be the sub interface for VLAN 10. There's a different command that we use to actually assign the sub interface to a VLAN. Now it's important to know that when we're logically dividing these uh, physical interfaces into sub interfaces the router treats each sub interface as a separate interface however from a physical point of view traffic for sub interface dot 10 and dot 20 will still flow over the same physical infrastructure the same physical link however the router treats these as different 
as different interfaces. So these are logical interfaces, meaning that we can't plug into these directly. They're logical interfaces on the router. And because the tree stem are separate interfaces, it means that those interfaces can be assigned IP addresses in different subnets. So as an example, when the router receives traffic tagged from VLAN 10, he doesn't see that traffic as coming in via FA00. He sees that traffic as coming in via FA00.10. So he's like, I received this traffic via my FA00.10 interface. When it wants to route that traffic to VLAN 20, he doesn't think he so he doesn't see in his in his routing table. I have to forward this traffic out of FA00. He says no. I have to forward this traffic in order to reach the device in VLAN 20 out of my FA00.20 interface because that's the interface which connects to VLAN 20. So as you can see, it sees these interfaces as being separate interfaces. And so therefore they can have an IP address in different subnets. However, from, again, from a physical point of view, the traffic for any one of these sub interfaces will still flow over the same physical interface. This is just a this is just a method, a technology that we can use to take a physical interface, break it down into multiple logical um, interfaces to support multiple VLANs over a single over a single link. Think of it like this: that when we have a road and we break down that road into multiple lanes. Essentially, each lane acts as its individual road because each lane will, will have its own traffic in. However, those lanes are still part of the road. And in, in, in this example, the way that this um, essentially matches what a router on a SIG does is that think of these um, sub-interfaces as being the lanes of the road in that they, they will logically carry traffic for their respective VLANs. However, uh, however, from a physical point of view, the traffic is still passing over the same road. It's still passing over the, the same physical um, link. The reason why this is called router on a stick is simply put, we have a single link between our switch and our router, and the traffic would follow a path like this. Would come into the switch, go into the router, um, be forwarded out the same physical interface down towards the respective VLAN that we want to communicate with. Now, router on a stick is great because we can have a single physical link between our switch and our router supporting all VLANs. However, there are some limitations to it. One of the biggest limitations is that can, it, uh, is um, congestion. So the problem is because we have a single physical link between our router and our switch supporting every VLAN, it's very easy for there to be congestion on the link because all traffic between VLANs will always be flowing over that link. Another issue is single point of failure. Literally, all it takes is for this router to go down and then we've lost connectivity between our VLANs. So this is where the second method comes into play, switch virtual interface. So be before we go any further, a switch virtual interface, that allows us to move the job of routing between VLANs from a router to a switch. However, the switch has to be able to support routing. It has to have layer three capabilities. So this would be a multi-layer switch or a layer three switch. So now, instead of the router routing between VLANs, we can, we can completely remove the router from the, from the discussion. And now it's gonna be the switch who's gonna be routing between VLANs for us. And so it simply works like this. We create a switch virtual interface, also known as a VLAN interface for each VLAN on our switch and we would configure an IP address on the interface. Now obviously that IP address has to be configured in the same subnet as that VLAN. And a switch virtual interface, it's a, it's a logical interface on a switch, so it, it doesn't actually exist in terms of we can't actually physically plug, we can't physically plug into it. So it exists logically on the device, we can't physically connect to it. It's a layer three interface, meaning that we can configure an IP address on that interface, and each interface represents its own broadcast domain. And this is a diagram um, representing what we're doing. So now, instead of having the router out here, we're literally just moving the router to inside the switch. So now, if VLAN 20 wants to communicate with VLAN so if VLAN 10 wants to communicate with VLAN 20, traffic is going to flow into the switch via FA00. That traffic is going to be routed logically to the VLAN 10 sub interface. No, sorry, to, to not sub interface, sorry, to the VLAN 10 interface. The switch is going to look in its routing table. So you're like, okay, wait a minute. To reach VLAN 20, I need to fall the traffic out of my VLAN 20 
interface. So it logically for the traffic out of a VLAN 20 interface over to the device in VLAN 20. And so when we configure the switch virtual interface, also again, switch virtual interface VLAN um, is used commonly to refer to a VLAN interface and vice versa. So when we configure this switch virtual interface, we would type an in interface VLAN number. Now the VLAN number has to match the VLAN that we're configuring a switch virtual interface for. So in this case, this switch virtual interface is for, for VLAN 10. When I actually configure it, I have to type in interface VLAN 10. I can't use any other number um, apart from uh, apart from, from VLAN 10. So obviously with the router on a stick, when I was creating my sub interfaces, I could use any number with the sub interface because the different command was assigned the sub interface to the VLAN. However, with the switch virtual interface, the number I use when configuring this logical interface has to match the VLAN that I'm configuring this for. Now, the next question you're, you're probably asking yourself is, Abdo, which one? Which one is better? And to be fair, I prefer switch virtual interface. That method I, I is better because we're, we're, completely re we're completely removing the single point of failure from our network. And now we're performing all the routing between VLANs on our switches. However, in reality, it just comes down to your environment and, and your budget. Layer 3 switches are going to be more expensive than Layer 2 switches. Obviously, that cost has come down in recent years, but it's, it's, it's always something to consider. And also, it comes down to your environment as well. If you're not going to have much inter-VLAN routing, then you could probably use a router on a stick. Or if you're not going to have much traffic, then you can use a router on, on a stick. However, if you're going to be in a large environment with a lot of inter-VLAN routing, then you're probably going to want to use switch virtual interfaces or a layer 3 switch. The reason being is because you don't want to congest that, that single link to the router with too much traffic. And that's all there is to it. That is routing between VLAN theory completed. We saw two methods, router on a stick, switch virtual interfaces, how both those methods rely on virtual interfaces to be configured on the devices respectively. Now in the videos which follow this, we're going to look at how to configure root on a stick and how to configure switch virtual interfaces. If you have enjoyed this content and would like to see more content like this, then please subscribe to my channel and thank you very much for watching.